Hey there, welcome to the show. I get asked this question about once a week inside of our Wired to Crush It Facebook group community where we have over 39,000 entrepreneurs in this group. I get asked this common question. The question that I get asked is, Tanya, when should I hire a virtual assistant? How do I hire a virtual assistant? How do you pay a virtual assistant? Where do you find one? How do you onboard them? How do you share your passwords and private information with them? So I recently just went through this process in my business. We recently took on the task of having to put out a job description out there for hiring a part-time video editor as a contractor with the team. And so I recently went through this exact situation in my brand and in my business. And so I wanna take you behind the scenes and show you exactly from start to finish how I did this and how I also set them up. Also, how I proceeded with the interview process to make sure that we brought on the best virtual assistant possible for our brand and business. So if you'd like to see this and if you'd like an over the shoulder look on how we put this together, this is the episode for you. Welcome to the Wired to Crush It show. This is where we talk all about business and money strategies to help you build a wildly successful life. My name is Tanya Eliza, and I'm so grateful to have you here. I've used a lot of these strategies to help me build my multiple seven figure brand and business, and I hope that they equally help you just as much as they've helped me. So hiring a virtual assistant is a large topic and I wanna make sure that I break it down into really simple bite-sized pieces for you to follow. The first thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that we're putting together a very clear and concise job description. Now this JD or job description, what I like to call it is a, well, it's called a JD for short. It needs to be very clearly outlined. What is it that you're looking for? What are your expectations? What are going to be the tasks, roles, and responsibilities of this job that you're hiring for? Now this could be just like a contractor job. Like I said, a virtual assistant, it could be a part-time, it could be a very part-time. It could be also a full-time position, but regardless of the position and how many hours you need the individual to help you, you need to have a really clear job description. Now I have templates that I love to use in my business. In fact, I thrive off of templates as far as SOPs go inside of our company. And I have a really great job description template that you can use to hire for any position or any contractor or virtual assistant job on planet earth. And all you have to do is fill in the blanks. And I even give you an example of how I filled in the blanks for this latest role that we hired for. And if you want to get your hands on this template and you think it would be really useful for you, we actually have it ready for you over on the blog at tanyaeliza.com forward slash 320. So wherever you're watching this video, I'll also leave a link in the description area. You can click that link. It'll take you over to my website and blog, and then you can see and request access to my job description template worksheet. So you just need to fill in the blanks and you don't need to worry about about going out there and having to create this from scratch. So on this job description, or even before you go to write your job description, there are a couple of things that you really, really have to know. Number one is what are you hiring for? So you have to know specifically what you're hiring for. Uh, it might be a specific contractor job like we just hired for, for example, a video editor, but it might be a little bit more of a general role as well. So for example, when I first got started in my business back in 2010, around two years into my business, I knew I needed somebody to come in and just help me. And I didn't even really know what it was for or what the job title was. So we just called that a virtual assistant. And so what you wanna do is you wanna sit down and you wanna tally up some of the tasks that you would want this individual to do. Even before you have a job title or anything that you're thinking of there, just list out all of the things that you want or need help in. And it could be everything from uh, your social media posts, replying to comments, replying to messages, emails, etc. So whatever that is for you, just write down all of the things that you know initially that you want to delegate to this person. Now, you can also leave it open. So what I did in the beginning when I was hiring my first virtual assistant is I said, hey, these are the things to start with that I need, but there's absolutely probably going to be more things that we think of that I need general help with. 
So once you know what you're hiring for and you know what they're going to be doing, at least the things that you know that you need help with most, the next thing that you have to think about, and this sometimes is a harder thing until you like get in the weeds with this, but have a general idea of how many hours per week that you need somebody. It could be as little as two hours a week to as most as 40 hours a week. But whatever that is, you can just clearly have an understanding of that so that you put it in the job description. So, you know, maybe to start, it would be anywhere from two to five extra hours a week. And we might move that all the way up to 10 or 20 over the coming years. But you have a general idea, at least for now, looking at the tasks that they have to take on each week with you and help you with, how many hours a week do you want to have somebody come in and help and pay them for that job. Okay, so now that you have a general idea of those three things and then you have the job description template and you filled in the blank on the template, now we have to post the job description. One of my favorite places to post job descriptions, depending on what you're hiring for, but for most of the roles here at TanyaEliza.com for the digital brand, we have a lot of contractors that work with us part-time on projects. So one of my favorite places for this is Upwork.com. I'll link to it in the show notes below for you, but you can go over to upwork.com and find freelancers and contractors that will pretty much do anything and everything that you can think of and will be able to massively help you in your business. Now, I have tried LinkedIn for hiring. I've also tried Fiverr, and there's a couple of others as well that exist out there. I personally have had the most success for the roles that we hire for in Upwork.com. However, it all depends on the role that you're hiring for. If you're looking for a more professional role, not just a virtual assistant, but maybe you need a business manager or a fractional controller or someone like that, you might try LinkedIn or places like Indeed.com. But if you need a general help contractor, virtual assistant type role, Upwork.com is one of my favorites. Now, if you have a favorite job posting spot that you love and I have maybe never heard of it, post in the comment section below and let us know what you prefer. Maybe we can all add a collaboration string here and share some insights. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to post the job on Upwork. It's very simple. It takes literally less than 10 minutes to do. So let's hop over to the computer and I'll show you exactly how to do this. Okay, so when you have an account with Upwork, it's really simple to navigate everything in here. And I absolutely 100% suggest that you browse around and there's all sorts of talent that you can search for all different types of work, especially a lot of virtual assistants. And so you can even come into um, specific uh, talent and go to the Discover tab and see all of the jobs that people have posted for normally like one-off contract work as well. But because this video is all about hiring a virtual assistant for your business or for your brand, that's what I'm going to show you how to do. And in this case, I'm going to share with you just the example that I recently did for, like I mentioned before, our video editor. So what we want to do is come over to post a job. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, stuff moves around on user interfaces all the time. I have no control over where Upwork moves their buttons or things like that. But basically we can come over to post a job or you can come over to jobs and click post a job. And when you're over here, you're going to walk through all of the prompts that it gives you. So we can create a new job post, edit an existing draft, or reuse a previous job post. You're going to indicate if you want it for short-term or part-time work or longer-term work. Uh, so short-term would be, um, you know, just like you know, less than six months. I would say if you're looking for somebody consistent, even if it's part-time hours, you can select longer term work and then click continue. And then you're going to give it a title. And this is why I like to have that job description already all printed out. So make sure to go over to tanyaeliza.com forward slash 320 and snag yourself a copy of that template that I put together for you. And you're gonna give, uh, you're gonna copy that job title over here. And instead of me going through the actual steps here, I'm just gonna actually show you exactly what I posted, and then I'll show you how we set this up. So right here, I have this one that I posted, 
and I'll go to the job post and we'll go to edit posting. So basically what I did was I gave it the title and then I copy and pasted exactly what I had on the job description. And I shortened it up just a little bit to make it more adequate for the Upwork platform. So you might wanna just edit it and shorten it up for the Upwork platform. Again, you don't wanna have somebody read 25 million paragraphs to try to just get the gist out of what this job entails. And they just wanna know, you know, what do they need to do? What are their qualifications? And I like to give, like I said, examples of a lot of the things that I'm looking for if I'm hiring a creative job. Again, it depends on the role. And then what we can do is give it a category. It'll ask you, do you wanna give it a category? I put it in video editing. If you're hiring for a virtual assistant, you can put it in admin or virtual assistant category. And then you can also list any skills that you would like to have uh, your contractor to have listed on their profile or at least knowledge of. So again, depending on the role, you're gonna indicate the skills that you're looking for. And this already pre-populates for you. It gives you a bunch of suggestions and you just select the ones that are there when you're going through posting the job. And then it's gonna ask you the scope. So I'm looking for um, more than six months, intermediate level. Um, I'm not planning for this role to hire full time. And then it asks us what you want to set as your budget. Now you can set a budget of whatever it is that you want, or you can select, I'm not ready to set a budget. I would highly recommend if it is a part-time consistent role that you absolutely set your budget. And then you are only going to have people apply that know what your budget is and they're not, and no one's gonna waste anybody's time. In this case, because I was hiring for a video editor, I wasn't ready to set a budget because I'm going to negotiate that with the talent that comes over to me. And the talent that I'm looking for is really on a per project basis. So it's not like a daily activity role like a virtual assistant might be. But again, it depends on the role and you have the option to set a budget. I highly recommend that you do. And that would typically be either a fixed price budget if you have like a project, like a one-off project, or if you have a consistent daily workload that you're offloading, you want to put an hourly maximum in there. I do have screening questions, and this is really important to have screening questions when people apply. So you actually have people that are going to take the time to give you what you want. So there's a bunch of suggested uh, pre-screening questions that you can use. Upwork gives you them, or you can create your own. Um, I have created my own for this job description and this role. And what I said, because this is a creative role, I said, as much as we wish we had the time to look at your whole amazing portfolio, we unfortunately can't. Can you help us out and please share examples of your work, long form YouTube videos that best resemble the examples we shared in the job posting? Do you have any other YouTube talents that we should know about? Thumbnail graphics, SEO, et cetera, which ones? This is a really good question to ask for every role. Do you have any other talents that would serve this job role that we we might not know about that you cared to share with us. Why are you the best person for this job? I want to see if they even care to answer this with any passion or effort. So this is why I ask these questions. And how can you help us grow our YouTube channel with your talents? You can insert how can you help us grow our brand, our company? Um, you know, how can you make my life easier if you're hiring for a virtual assistant role? But the reason why you want to put these and what I'm looking for is when people answer them, that they're actually taking the time and they care about really wanting this position with us. So I add screening questions. It is optional, but I highly recommend that you do. And then we have the option when you're creating the job post to have any advanced pre preferences. So how many hours per week? When is the start date and more that you that you have here. So here's all the options that it gives you when you go to run through creating this. So what do you want their English level to be? 
uh, what is the time requirement for the role, talent type, location. So if you have a specific region, country, or location that you only want to hire in, obviously, if you narrow down the location, you will have lesser candidates, but that might be something that you do want to do up depending on you and the role. The higher date within what, how long, um, number of preferred professionals needed, job success score. Um, everybody gets a job success score on Upwork based on reviews that other people who hire them give them. And personally, for me, I like it to be 90% and above, and I do select including rising talent. And you can hover over if you don't know what that is, and that will tell you what rising talent is. And then amount earned, any amount earned is what I typically put, but basically on Upwork, you can select if you want people that have already been working on Upwork and earning a certain level of, of income already, meaning they probably got a lot of reviews, et cetera. So you can decide there, that's how I typically would set mine up, but it depends on the role. Job post preferences. So you can adjust if you want this to be an invite only role, meaning you find talent and invite people to this job, only Upwork users or anyone including search engines. I say anyone including search engines. And if you have any coworkers that you would like to have help you manage this job posting, you can add them here. And then you can invite talent right away. And the cool thing is, is that if you already know a freelancer on Upwork or any agencies, you can invite them to this job. I typically don't know. That's why we're doing the job posting. So I leave that blank. And then you would want to click um, save job or post job when you're going to post. Now, you also are going to be getting a little notification once you post a brand new job that says, hey, would you like us to uh, feature this job post at the very top and uh, of the list when freelancers are looking for work in that category? And I highly recommend on Upwork that you absolutely do that. So you might want to take a day or two and see what comes in without you boosting that uh, job posting. And let's say you don't get very many proposals and you're like, man, I wish I had more proposals, more people to review. Well, what you can do is then go and um, feature your job posting. And that would be uh, highly recommended. I think it's only like 30 bucks or $29.99 on Upwork and it's highly recommended. I do it for all of the, the jobs that I, I post because I don't want to waste any time. I want as many candidates as possible and I want to see their work and I want to build a relationship with them and I want to have a good plethora of candidates to work through to find the best person for this role. Now, what I like to do is after you have the job posted, I like to come over to talent and I like to come over to either discover or search. And let's say you're looking for a virtual assistant and or for example, um, I was looking for a video editor. So I typed in the search video editing YouTube or YouTube video editor. And then what happens is, is you get all of these talents that you can actually look at their portfolios, you can review their um, work they, their, that they have uh, that they have done, and then you can also read their reviews. And most of the time they do have, you know, you can read their reviews, you can look at their work history, you can look at the, all of the things that they do and figure out, okay, is this somebody that we could invite to this job? So after I post the job, I'll typically go through and find talent but I will filter it. So I don't like to waste a lot of time. So I am going to, you can come over here and filter by qual quality of um, talent. You can uh, adjust your hourly rate. So let's say you only wanted to pay, you know, up to $15 an hour or $10 an hour, and it would just, you know, give you all of those people. Uh, let's say you wanted to find somebody, you can filter all here. Uh, down the left hand side and then what you can do is go through and look at everything that everybody that you have to work for work with here and you can check them out and then what you can do you, it tells you where they're you know where they're from where they live their percentage of job success I really like this and then you can look at their entire portfolio that they have listed here 
um, and you know, you click on and you can watch the videos or you can, whatever their portfolio consists of. It's not always videos, but in this case, I was hiring for a video editor. You can look at all of their skills and let's say you're like, man, this seems like a person that would be a good person for this job role. Then what you can do is you can click invite and it will invite that user to that job post. And then they have the opportunity to apply They'll go through the screening questions. They'll send you their proposal. Basically, their proposal will show you how much they're willing to do the job for per hour. So that gives us a really good starting point. Or they might decline the invite, and that's fine too. So once you have posted, what I would do is I would take maybe 30 minutes to an hour and go through all of the talent that you can find and invite them to the job. Because you might find somebody that is really, really good that you invited. And this has actually been the case in a lot of my hires as well. So I spend the time to go through portfolios and such. And a lot of the time you have to understand that even though their portfolio is one thing on Upwork, they might have been doing a lot of work and they have all new stuff but haven't posted it on Upwork yet. So you want to ask them for some of their newest stuff or newest testimonials or newest skills that maybe don't show on Upwork. So once that is done and you've got that rocking and rolling, then how do we manage that? So what we wanna do is come over to our jobs and all of the jobs that you have um, posted are here. And let's say you just have the one. So we have right here, it'll tell you how many new proposals you have and there'll be these tabs at the top. So the job post is here. And then the invited freelancers, anybody that you have invited to the role are going to be in this section here. And then right here will be your proposals. And then you can go through your proposals and actually learn a little bit about the individual. So let's say this gal right here, she says she can do this job for $25 an hour. Here's our cover letter and um, screening questions that she answered. And then she gave uh, more information here. And then you can chat with this individual and you can set up a meeting. You can give them a test project if you wanna give them a test project. Whatever the case may be, you can go through and um, chat with them here. I highly recommend asking a few questions by chat and then you know maybe scheduling a meeting. So for example, with this gal, I had her do a test project and then I said, hey, let's get on a meeting. So we have a meeting scheduled all right in the interface of Upwork. We don't need to leave Upwork. In fact, you're not supposed to leave Upwork. We're supposed to do all the hiring and communication inside of Upwork, which is really cool. And then let's say you decided that this person was uh, good and you wanted to shortlist them, then what you can do is you can come here and you can click shortlisted and you can um, hire them. So let's say you go to their, their profile and if you wanted to hire them, you can hit hire and now they'll be able to work and uh, charge an hourly to your Upwork account. Now, when you go to hire them, you can also let them know that you, you can put caps on things. So you can say, hey, I only want you to work 10 hours a week. So you put a cap and it says 10 hours per week, which is really cool. So you can control all of that. So there's no overages or miscommunication or anything. It's very well protected inside of this platform. So I highly recommend this platform. And of course, there's other platforms out there that you can post jobs and you can go through the same process. But for this kind of work and for finding a virtual assistant, I think Upwork is really, really, really simple and easy to use. Plus, it's extremely transparent because you can see so much when it comes to the contractors that are out there. So once you've really narrowed down the candidates and you can see my process for this, I like to be very intentional just because I don't like to waste my time or anybody else's time. And I would like to just spend the time interviewing my top three, not to get overwhelmed with everything everything that's going on. Now, depending on the role, you may or may not have to do an interview. I know for us, when we 
hired our video editor, we didn't necessarily need to do a Zoom interview. We really collaborated through test projects and back and forth text right on the platform of Upwork.com. So that was really simple for us. But if somebody's going to be working with you closely on a day to day, you're really going to be collaborating them. You maybe want to have a weekly meeting with them. They really need to know more ins and outs of you and your business, then you absolutely want to conduct a 30 ish minute initial interview with them. And here's a couple of my top tips for interviewing a potential VA before you go into hiring them. So like I said, tip number one, make it about 30 minutes. And I always like to delegate the time or communicate the time allotment right at the interview moment. Hey, I would really like to get on a really quick 30 minute get to know you interview. Now in this get to know you interview, that's exactly what I'm doing. I've already reviewed their skills. I've already reviewed their qualifications and I already know that they're qualified for the job. Otherwise we wouldn't get to the interview phase. What I wanna know in the interview phase is could I jive with this person? Like what is their personality, attitude and tone like? And what are some of their ambitions and things that they're looking for into the future? This is gonna really help me to understand if this person is going to be a really good person to grow with me and grow with the company. So this is more of a get to know you interview. One of my favorite questions I do like to ask in an interview, and yes, I know it's extremely cliche, is where do you see yourself in the next five years? And I always hated this question when I was on the other side of the table, when I was in the working field before becoming an entrepreneur, but it's such a powerful question as the interviewer. And the reason why it's powerful is you can understand very intently right away by their answer of that question if they have the capacity to grow with you and if they're going to be in your business with you with the right intentions to help you grow your brand and help you grow your business. The last thing that I really like to make sure, and this is probably one of the most important things beyond the skills and accomplishments or credentials that they have for the role, is I like to ask myself, would I socially like to hang out with this individual? Like, would we get along and uh, on a lunch date together, right? Like, would we have fun? Would we jive? And if the answer is yes, then I probably have the most amazing candidate ready to be hired. Now, once you go through this phase, sometimes you may feel that you need to interview for a second time. And if that's the case, absolutely interview a second go around or just go with your gut like I do and hire them. Now, when I hire somebody, and again, you can do this right on Upwork, you can click the hire button, you insert your payment details and Everything is paid through and tracked through Upwork. They have a time tracking software. They have that all built in. And this is another reason why I love Upwork because I don't need to pay anybody through PayPal or Venmo and not have any protection with that. You get it all through Upwork. And this is not a sponsored video by Upwork, although maybe it should be. <laughs> but I I just love using the platform so much because it's an all-in-one built-in system. You don't have to worry about anything. So what you want to do is let the person know that you're hiring. I, well, what I like to do is I like to say, hey, we're going to go on a 30 day trial. I'd love to hire you. I think you'd be great for the role. I think you'd add a lot of value here. However, I just want to make sure that this is a good fit for you and it's a good fit for us. Let's go on a 30 day trial. Now, the reason why I like to say a 30 day trial is because this sets them up for the mindset of like, okay, I've got to give my best work in the next 30 days. And then it also sets me up for an out in case it doesn't work out. It also sets them up for an out in case it doesn't work out. And what I typically do is the day that I hire and the day that they start the work, I schedule immediately right then and there the 30 day review that I'm going to have with them 30 days from their start date on a approved date and time together, an agreed upon date and time. So they're expecting that, they know it's coming, and then you have a little 10 point checklist, and maybe I'll do another video about what the 10 point checklist is. If you want that, let me know in the comment section below and I'll create another episode talking about the hiring process. But I have a 10 point checklist that I go through that's an evaluation checklist and a conversation starter when we do the review to make sure like, okay, yes, this is the perfect person for us and we're gonna keep moving forward in this working relationship. Now, one thing that I have found to be one of the biggest helpful 
pieces of content in our business. One of the biggest helpful tools in our business is having standard operating procedures, SOPs. So every task in my business and in my brand has a SOP attached to it. And what is an SOP? It's either a description video on how to execute that task or a document on the steps to execute that task. So what I've done with all of my hires is I've gone through and I have listed out all of the how to's to accomplish the task that I want them to accomplish. And sometimes your VA can also create these. But what I will say is you never want to have a task in your business that anybody is executing without having an accompanied SOP document that goes with it. And again, that's probably a whole nother episode on its own, how to collaborate and create the SOPs. But this is a very important part of the hiring a virtual assistant process that I want to share. So when you bring on your virtual assistant or your contractor, or whoever, is working with you, you want to make sure that you really set them up for success and help them to meet your expectations. And by doing, um, by having a little library of SOPs for them and how to's will show them how you expect them to execute the task. Never, never, never have the expectation that they are, never expect that they should know how you want something done. You should share with them, hey, this is how I want it done. However, if you have a better way to do it, let me know we can collaborate and get the best way implemented for this task. And remember to go with this episode, I have put a lot of work in creating a really great template for you to use to help you craft your next job description and all your job descriptions in the future. You can use this template literally for any job description that you ever want to use or post on any of the job boards, including Upwork.com. And if you'd like to get your hands on that template, you can head over to TanyaEliza.com forward slash 320 and grab that template. I think right now we have it on special for only $7. You can get a job description template that will help you forever in your business. You don't have to sit and figure out what to write or how to present the job opportunity in the best way possible for you. It's already done for you and you just need to fill in the blanks and I even show you how to do that. You can head over, like I said, again, to tanyaeliza.com forward slash 320 and you can pick it up there. I'll leave a link where you're watching this video or listening to this episode in the show notes below and you can click over and grab those templates. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Wired to Crush It show and I hope it adds so much value to your business and life. I release a new episode every single week that will help you absolutely crush it. So make sure that you're notified of those new episodes by hitting the notified link. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you are subscribed, leave us a review, leave us a comment. I would love to know your thoughts and how this episode has specifically helped you. I feature a new community member every single week that takes time and leaves us a valuable comment in the comments below or reviews the show. So if you wouldn't mind taking a couple minutes and doing that for me right now, I would be most grateful. Tag me on social media. My handle is at Tanya Eliza. I'd love to know what episode you just listened to. So come and connect with me on social.